Welcome back to our channel. In this episode, I'm going to show you how you can fix stuff in the Type 3 core yourself. So stay tuned. So welcome back to the channel. We got the question quite often, how can I fix stuff in Type 3's core myself? So I figured we'll just go into that. And the good thing is that Georg Ringer from the Type 3 core team basically gave me a very, very, very simple fix that we can do. It's just adding a CSS class to a button. So it's really, really simple. Let's take a look. So on forge.typo3.org, the issue tracker, we now have the report um, by Georg, which basically shows that the small OK button down here doesn't have a proper style attached to it. And the idea was to just make it a bootstrap button success. So it's a green button, or maybe we'll just make it button primary, so it's a blue button, um, in order to fix that. And this change is very, very simple, but I thought I'll take the opportunity to show you how I approach these things, how I find my way around Type 3's core. So if we dive into that, I first take a look at this component that we're having right here. And what I'm doing now is I'm basically trying to find for some bit of text that I can search for in Type 3's core. Obviously, we don't want to go for OK, because OK will be used a lot <laughs> in Type 3's core. So I thought I'll go with enter a name for the cell. So if we jump over to PHP Storm right here, what I'm doing on the left-hand side, I'm basically going into the Type 3 folder and I use the find in path functionality. I use this a lot. So I can now basically look for enter a name for the cell. And what we can see now, we only have one hit. So we're already at a good track here. So if we open up this file, we can now see that this is basically the translated unit that we, the, the piece of text that we wanted to find. Um, and since this is a local lang file, this is used for obviously localization. So the next thing we're going to look for is the translation ID, which is this part up here, the grid name help. So I just copy paste that back into my clipboard, then move over again to the left hand side and we'll do a search again into Type 3's entire core. So we click this and then copy paste what we got left. And now we can see the local lang wizards XLF file, which is the one we already knew there would be. And now we have a grid editor.ts file and a grid editor.js file. The grid editor ts file is a TypeScript file. Um, and what happens is we write our code in TypeScript and then compile JavaScript from that. There's a ton of tutorials out on the web if you want to learn more about TypeScript. Um, we'll just try to keep things simple in this regard. So we open up the grid editor ts file and it'll jump right to the place where that text is being used. So now we know that we're close to what we were looking for. And what I can do now, I basically skim around the file right here and it's appended markup for the form group. Okay, that makes sense. And if I scroll down a bit further, we can see that this is the modal that is being shown in that um, saving uh, process. So what we can do now is we can basically see, okay, Here's a button that has the name OK. It also uses the OK text and the default. That's this part right here. So this is where our CSS class will need to go. So what we do next is we go into our browser, log into our Type 3 install, and just go onto basically any page we like. We, I'm going to zoom in here a bit. We're going to click the plus icon scroll down to backend layouts, click that. And now we need to find that modal that Georg is referring to in the ticket. I do know that 
I can set a name and a column number, so I'm pretty sure it's the edit cell modal. And as we can see here on the screen, this is exactly what we figured it to be. That's the place where we need to go, and this is the OK button that needs to have a different class attached to it. So we're going to close the modal for now, switch back into PHPStorm, and basically fix that string right here. So we're going to call it button primary. And we save that. And since we are in a TypeScript file, we now need to compile this. So we're going into our terminal right here. And then we switch into the build folder, if I don't mistype it, that's this one. And we run yarn build. This is basically invoking everything we need in order to process front-end stuff. So JavaScript minification, uh, SCSS parsing, all these things are within the yarn build uh, process right here. So we'll wait for a couple of seconds until it's done. The uglifying takes most time, and bam, here we go. So what we can do now is we open up Tower, which is my favorite Git client. Um, and what we can see here is that we now have two changed files. The one is the TypeScript file, that's our change, the one we did. And then we have the griditor.js file, which is the rendered compiled JavaScript that we want to merge into TypeO3's core. So now, the next thing we need to do is head back to our browser and just reload this frame and then click it and we see nothing has happened. So why is this? JavaScript files are cached quite aggressively by Google Chrome. So a nice workaround around this is basically to open up your inspector panel at the bottom. And we can make it really, really small because we just need it to be open. That's totally enough. And now we reload this frame again. And because we have the inspector console open, these files will now be loaded uncached. So. If we click here, we can now see we got the blue button, everything the way we wanted it to be. So our bug is fixed. So the next steps are that we head over into our Git client and stage these two files and then come up with the proper commit message. Since this is a bug fix, we're going to prefix the commit message with bug fix. Then we're going to write a small summary of what we actually changed. And this is uh, apply proper button class to, um, what was it? It was the BE layout modal. And then we can add a description. Keep in mind, when you write a, a description for a merge, never describe what didn't work before, right? Because nobody cares what didn't work. People care about what happened now. So what we're going to do is writing that <coughs> the modal OK button of the BA layout um, column assignment now sports the correct color for the button. That's a short description. The bigger your change, the more precise your description should be. Since this is a really, really tiny change, the small description is totally fine. The next things we need to add is the so-called resolves line, which basically means which issue number or which ticket does this fix. So we go back into our browser, back to the ticket, and just copy and paste the issue ID. Then we go back to tower and say, that's the issue we're resolving with this patch. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a releases line to indicate which type of three releases this patch affects. If you're in doubt and don't know exactly, go with master. Um, if you find a bug specifically in, say, uh, a version 8 or a version 7, always fix the bug on master first. 
we will then backport it into the older branches if necessary. And we're basically good to go here. So what we do now is we're going to commit this and we can now take a look at our latest commit and especially at the commit message. I hope I can zoom in. No, I can't. So what has changed here is that I have a pre-commit hook for my Git repository for type of three, which added this change ID. Um, this thing is important. Never try to come up one yourself. It's important that these are unique across the change sets because this is what Garrett uses to identify a certain review. And we're going to take a look at how reviews work in a second. So what we now need to do, we need to push this to Garrett. And I'm using Tower right here, and Tower has a very handy Garrett push button, so I can just click this and say, all right, this is for master, the review branch is also master, so I'm going to push to Garrett. And this was going to take a couple of seconds. And once we're done with that, I can now head over to review.typo3.org and take a look at my changes. And on the very top, I can now see a pri uh, proper button class to the ba backend layout model. So if we click this, this is the review itself. And it shows all the changed files, and people can now start voting for this review. What we're going to do now is we're going to fast forward to in maybe two to three minutes. This is when all the build processes are done, and we should get our ideally first positive vote for this patch set. So we're just going to speed this up now. And we're back. What happened now is if we take a look at my screen right here, is that the typo3.com pre-merge build server has actually verified the build. So we now know that the, the, the unit tests ran through, the CGL, um, so coding guideline checker went through, and a couple more things, a um, couple of tests that we run around 10 to 12,000 each run. And what we can do now is we can now inform the core team that we do indeed have a fix. So what we do is we copy the review ID from the browser that's up here. This is different from the change ID, keep that in mind. And then move over to Slack into the core dev channel and simply go like, no, nah, not hi guys, but hi everybody. Got a real quick fix here. Videotaping. So smile, you're on TV. And then we type review colon show and then the review ID, which will then invoke TYPO3's Slack bot and it will show a link to the change and hopefully somebody will jump in and upvote our change. So let's stay tuned with that. And while we're waiting, I can give you a short link and an update on where to look for how to set up your system because this is maybe something for a different video at a later point in time but we got a proper guide um, that will guide you through the process really step by step so i'm going to show you where to get that now so if we head over to docs.typo3.org on the left hand navigation you will see guide and tutorials and there is the contribution workflow guide and you can click this and this will basically start from super scratch so setting up your account on typo3.org, setting up your git commit hooks, setting up uh, your proper Garrett account, all these things. It sounds tricky, it really isn't. Um, onboarding normally takes between five to eight minutes, so it's really that fast, um, getting up and running with all these things, and um, just work through the guide, and I think think we might do a dedicated video series later on. If you would want to have that, leave a comment in the description below and we'll put it on our uh, filming agenda in that regard. So the, what we can do now is basically reload our change a couple of times and we can now see on the left hand side down here at code review that basically two people, uh, Andreas Fernandez and Jan Delius, have now upvoted our change from a code review perspective which means they took a look at the code and they think, 
okay, that looks as if it makes sense. There's a couple of things to keep in mind when writing proper code. Everybody should be able to understand the code while just looking at it rather than debugging it in your IDE or uh, wherever you like to work. Um, we now might need to wait for a couple more people who can actually verify the behavior. So not only looking at the code, but making sure it actually does work, um, which makes sense. And once we're done with that, we can then ask a core team member to merge the change for us. And this is how easy contribution to Typo 3 actually is. Don't be intimidated by the, um, by the steps you go through. It's really, really simple. Head over to Typo 3 uh, core dev channel in our Slack. If you're not on Slack yet, head over to forger.typo3.com slash Slack to get your invite. And uh, we'll hope to see you in the core dev channel soon. So stay tuned. Bye.